Boogeyman Ben coming round the bend is Boogeyman Ben. Is Boogeyman Ben. Greetings, my fellow Fright Fiends, and thanks so much for dropping by the Horror Zone. I hope everyone's doing well. Uh, today's video is going to be a very special one. This is one that I have been wanting to do for a number of months now. Uh, back on August 21st of this year, we celebrated the 40th anniversary of this amazing film. A film that uh, has always meant so much to me. A film that terrified me as a child. It was actually my second uh, horror movie experience in the movie theater. And it was the um, second horror film to ever terrify me um, to my core as a young kid. Um, of course, I'm talking about 19. 1981's An American Werewolf in London. Now, um, I saw this film at seven years old in the summer of 1981. Um, my father took me to see this at Hilltop Mall Cinema. I saw many uh, films there growing up. Uh, that movie theater is long gone. In fact, the mall is long gone. So a lot of great memories of going to see movies. Um, but my dad lived in El Sobrani, California at the time. He was married to his third wife, uh, Janie. And um, this was a film that I begged him to take me to see. I remember being absolutely horrified, especially when it came to when it came to David's transformation during the second act of the film. I remember after that, I remember holding my hands up to my face most of the film and my dad laughing at me for most <laughs> of the rest of the runtime because I refused to watch it without my hands covering my eyes. Um, the creature in this, uh, the amazing werewolf creature, was unlike anything I had ever seen before. And I still remember my dad at that point lived, like I said, in El Sobrani, California, and I would stay with him every other weekend. Um, that night, I remember I had a waterbed. <laughs> We're going back to 1981. I remember I had a waterbed. So I remember my bed being against the wall, and there was a window here, and then the doorway to the room was here. Um, I still remember this very vividly. And I remember that night, after seeing this film, uh, it was a Saturday, so I remember laying in the bed and staring at the ceiling. Um, at that point, Salem's Lot had petrified me from ever looking out a window, so I do remember that the curtains were closed in the bedroom, um, but I could still see underneath the curtains. So I remember I didn't want to look underneath the curtains <laughs> because I didn't want to see Ralphie Glick. And at this point, because of the tra trauma I had gone through with seeing this film, I didn't want to look at the doorway to my room. The door was always open when I stayed at my dad's, so my door was open. And I remember I just kept staring at the ceiling because I, I kept thinking my seven-year-old brain, if I looked at the door, I was going to see the Kessler Wolf. I was going to see that devil hound right there walking towards me. And I refused to look at that doorway. Um, I think eventually I had called from my dad. I remember my dad uh, letting me sleep in the room with him and his wife um, in the middle of, of the bed. I still remember that. I can't believe it's been 40 years. And um, just if, for people that aren't aware of what the story of an American world in London is about, the story deals with Jack and David, who are two American college students. They're on a walking tour of Europe. And they are attacked by a werewolf when they wander off the road and onto the moors in Northern England. David survives while Jack is brutally killed. David is taken to a hospital in London where the disturbing apparition of his deceased friend informs him that he is a werewolf and will transform at the next full moon. For the cast, you have David Naughton as David Kessler, Griffin Dunn as Jack Goodman, Jenny Gutter as Alex Price, John Woodvine as Dr. Hirsch. The movie was written and directed by John Landis. Uh, you have composer Elmer Bernstein. And uh, the amazing Rick Baker was the designer and creator of all the special makeup effects in the film. A little trivia on the film, it is the first film to earn an Academy Award for Best Makeup. Uh, that category was created in 1981. John Landis wrote the screenplay for this film following an incident while shooting Kelly's Hero in 1970. He was a gopher on that film. The film took place in the Yugoslavian countryside. Landis encountered a gypsy funeral where the body was buried in a massively deep grave. Uh, the 
The body was buried feet first while wrapped in garlic so he would not rise from the dead. Uh, the final look of the werewolf was based on makeup creator Rick Baker's quiche hound Bosco. David Naughton revealed that the hospital bed in the forest scene was the most difficult and painful because of the glass contact lenses he had to wear. During the attack on the moors, uh, Griffin Dunn actually ripped uh, the werewolf's foam rubber head off um, after Baker asked him to be careful as the head was new and delicate. It surprises most to know that Elmer Bernstein's original score for the film is a total of seven minutes. Uh, the music serves as more of a transitional cue between pre-recorded songs featured throughout the film. The werewolf howl used for the film was a combination of a wolf and an elephant. And of course, I love everybody in it. I mean, everybody in the film is fantastic, from David Naughton and Griffin Dunn to the beautiful uh, Jenny Gutter, uh, who plays Alex. Um, just, she is so gorgeous and so amazing in the film. I always had a crush on her. I love John Woodvine as Dr. Hirsch. I love... It's it's such a fantastic film in that John Landis wrote a fantastic script and the comedy and the horror just balance really well because I know that, you know, he was primarily known for comedies at that point, having done the Blues Brothers and Animal House. But this film just works and the banter between Jack and David is so seamless. But you would just believe that these guys were friends and a lot of the banter was improvised. The knock knock joke scene um, when they're walking and you know before they get to the slaughtered lamb that was all improvised. The amazing groundbreaking effects in this film by Rick Baker. It, to me no werewolf film can touch this film. Even you know 40 years later it still just holds up so well. The makeup effects in this are unlike anything I've ever seen and uh, still just pack so much punch that transformation scene still blows me away 40 years later and it's it just it, it's it's incredible that in 40 years nothing has been able to touch that for me and the look of the creature in this film the look of the werewolf of course based on rick baker's uh, dog bosco is the most terrifying depiction of a werewolf i've ever seen in any film it just i don't know what it is i i it's the brilliance of john landis's idea that it should be a devil hound and then Rick Baker's amazing uh, effects work that just bring that creature to life. And even though it was done through puppetry, I never saw the back half of the creature. Just so well done and still so effective. That image of that wolf is still just burned into my brain. And I remember how terrified I was the first time I saw it, the first time I heard it. And still all these years later, there's nothing more terrifying than the Kessler Wolf. And there's so many iconic moments in this film that still just stick with me after all these years. The scene of uh, David and uh, Jack encountering the people at the slaughtered lamb, uh, them getting you know off track and wandering onto the moors. Uh, the scene where you hear the wolf stalking them and that sound. The wolf sound has always terrified me and it's the minimalist of not seeing the creature. You don't ever get a full reveal of the werewolf and I think that's what works so well in the film. The other thing that works so well in this film is Elmer Bernstein's haunting score. Uh, and I love how it's used sort of very sparse uh, throughout the film. It's kind of like a bridge to the next song like by the Marcells or Van Morrison or Creedence Clearwater. Um, but all of the music in this works so beautifully. It's just, it's, it's just done so exceptionally well. One of the greatest thrills for me being a fan of the film was having the opportunity to meet David Naughton. I actually got to meet him on the 35th anniversary of the film. It was actually the day before the 35th anniversary of the film. I met him on August 20th of 2016 at the Stockton Con, which was an annual comic convention in Stockton, California. Um, I found out about it and absolutely had to go to it. It was my first and only time at that convention. I was so nervous going up to see David Naughton and um, I wore this shirt. It was an awesome shirt. It's, it's uh, based on a room morgue cover. The artwork features David in the makeup where he had the glass contacts and the and the the teeth and it's the scene in the movie where he's having one of his dreams um where he's running through the woods he, and he's he stops he sees a vision of alex and himself in the hospital bed and when alex walks up to the bed and smiles at him he opens his eyes and he reveals those those creepy eyes, those teeth, and the sound effect is so creepy, but that was the most painful scene for him to shoot. So I had that image on my shirt and I was very apprehensive to go up to him at first because he looked like he was just uncomfortable with something that maybe had 
happened prior to me getting there. Maybe like, uh, maybe it just, it was just a vibe I got off of him. Maybe from somebody that had come up to him prior to me uh, approaching his table. But once he saw my shirt and said, oh, that's that uh, that artwork from Rue Morgue. And he was just talking to um, the woman that was there. You know, they always have like an assistant there that helps, you know, with, you know, the transaction and everything. Before they sign the autograph and take a picture with you. Um, but he was talking about that and we started talking about the makeup effects, Rick Baker's makeup and just what he had to go through for the transformation scenes. And it was just such a terrific conversation. And then it, it's, there's times like that where I just forget who I'm talking to. I'm, I'm just realizing I'm standing here talking to the star of the film. And uh, I got really nervous because I've been a fan of his and other works as well. I mean, of course, he was known for the Dr. Pepper commercials. I had seen him in a movie called Midnight Madness with Michael J. Fox. Um, he was on the show My Sister Sam. I'd seen him in the movie Body Bags, a John Carpenter anthology film. So he had been to so many things that I grew up loving and just was a fan of. And just staying there talking to a horror icon, I really just got overwhelmed. So when we actually, when I, you know, paid to have him sign my uh, American Werewolf in London poster, and he, we did the uh, picture. My wife took a picture of us. I held the poster up in front of the shirt that I was wearing. So I'm holding the poster like this, and you cannot see the shirt that I'm wearing. So I didn't realize it till you know I walked away and I said thank you, Mr. Naughton. And he said thank you very much, Ben. And and just when he said my my name, I was just like even more blown away. So I think I walked away kind of shaky. And then when we stopped and I kind of composed myself and was looking at the pictures, I realized what a doofus I was because I held that poster in front of my awesome Rue Morgue shirt. So you can't even tell what shirt I'm wearing. Um, which is unfortunate, but still that experience will always mean so much to me and David Naughton giving his time to me and just having a conversation with somebody that is so important to me and such a horror icon and uh, just what a thrill. What an amazing, amazing experience. Couldn't let 2021 close out without talking about what is, uh, in my opinion, one of the greatest horror films ever made, one of the most important horror films ever made, and my favorite werewolf movie of all time. I think it's just absolutely perfect. It never gets old. Everything still holds up 40 years later. And uh, if you haven't seen this film, definitely run out and check it out. Watch it. Pick it up. Um, it's a fantastic, fantastic film. So... Thank you everyone for taking the time to stop by the horrors. Let me know what your thoughts about American Werewolf in London are down in the comment section below. would love to hear from everyone. Take it easy, stay scared, and remember, you wear the moon. Hey, fellow Fright Fiends, just want to say thank you again for supporting Boogeyman Ben's Horror Zone. If you're brand new to the channel and you haven't yet subscribed, please hit the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification so you're updated every time I drop a new video. I typically do this once or twice a week with new content. Uh, I've been doing this for over 11 years, and the horror genre is a passion of mine. And it really means a lot to me that I can share that passion with all of you guys. Thanks so much again for the support, and I'll talk to you again later. Take it easy. Stay scared as always. Peace.